Jen here, wishing you a happy spooky Halloween. <laughs> Seriously though, today I'm going to share some of my favorite Halloween activity. Stay tuned. <laughs> Number one, haunted houses. So you design a haunted house, give out blank paper and pencils and crayons and paint, and create a random haunted house with spooky stuff. For younger kids, you can give a list of things they need to include, like ghosts in the attic, and witches on the roof, and a harvest moon, a black cat, broken windows, etc., etc., etc. Now this can be translated and used to focus on addresses or parts of a city. For example, the address of my haunted house is 13 Spooky Street, Hauntedopolis, right next to the cemetery and the abandoned factory. Spooky, huh? You can also talk about families. Say, a freaky family lives in my house. There are two ghost babies, a zombie dad, and a witch mom. You can have kids decide their own families. Now, most of these activities will require some spooky vocabulary. So, be sure to teach some spooky words before any Halloween lessons. Monsters. Someone's monster, like Frankenstein's monster, Aaron's monster, my friend Stiopa's monster. Your kids get to design their own monster. This is a great and fun lesson where kids can learn and practice colors, body parts, and clothes. You can give younger kids like a blank outline kind of a human shape or just a sheet of paper depending on how they are and you ask them to draw and go crazy draw any number of eyes and ears and arms and legs and mouths and belly buttons and you give them to like colors and they make a green arm and a purple head and 14 yellow ears things like that for older kids you can ask them create a backstory so where did your scary monster come from why does he have seven eyes? Did the monster fall into acid? Did a witch put a spell on him? Is he dating a monster and just going through a really hard time? No, there's no we this time, pal. Ask kids what their monster does. Does it breathe fire? Does it spit slime? Is it nice? Is it mean? At the end of the lesson, you can have kids share with the class, share with each other, take it home and tell their parents all about their scary creations. Now, depending on the class, I like to watch this video. Hey, that's my monster. Written by Amanda Knoll and illustrated by Howard McWilliam. So kids can have lots of different monster ideas. What kind of a monster are you? Another good children's story on YouTube is called Room on a Broom. It's right here. It's a great children's book and you can have children play the characters and have them practice sequencing. First, then, after that, and finally. So using those words in the beginning of sentences will help them in the retelling of the story. Spooky stories. Mm. For older or more advanced stories, I find that Halloween is the perfect time to talk about writing. Everyone, including me, loves a good scary story. And this is a good chance to tap into students' creativity and maybe get a few of those kids, the ones who sit in the back, you know, Boris, who isn't especially interested in English or writing, to get him creative and writing a bit more. This is also a great way to focus on one or more of the following. So, first person perspective, I saw this, I saw this, this happened to me. Second person perspective, you did this, you see this. Or third person perspective, he, she, it did that. It's another great way also to focus on creative writing and sequencing. Firstly, talk about the elements of a good story, what makes a good story. These words are very important. Exposition, development, climax, and resolution. Explain what those mean and how they fall into the context of a story. Now, I like to give students a good organize, like where they can put their main character, the protagonist, and their villain, the antagonist, and their spooky setting. Now, there are lots and lots of good spooky story prompts online. There are some of my favorites listed in the description, but really, use Google, it's your friend. The trick for this, like I've said in the past, is to give your students definite and specific guidelines. You can't just say, here's a pencil, 
right. You've got to help them piece it together. It's called scaffolding. So time for a little mini lesson. What is scaffolding? Scaffolding is building on students' existing knowledge so they can do a harder task. For example, you can't ask a kid to bake a cake, but you can say, break eggs, mix flour, mix milk, stir it up, pour it in a pan, and put it in the oven. A kid can do all of those tasks, but not without you explaining each one to them. So in the context of teaching English or teaching writing, you're going to first ask your students to write who their main character is on a separate sheet of paper. Ask, is it a boy? Is it a girl? Does it have long hair or short hair? Old, young, etc., etc. And do the same for the villain. Secondly, ask them to name the setting. Is the story in the present? Is it in the past? Or is it in the future? Is it a magical fantasy world? Or is it on Mars? Or is it on Baranol? <laughs> Finally, give them a good horror story beginning. Atom Molecule. Halloween edition. Now I swear to God this works for every topic and it's very fun on Halloween. So, you have one is skeleton, two, witch, three, vampire? Four, ghost, five, monster, and skip to eight and do spider. So the teacher, that's you, says... Ghost. Ghost, ghost is four. So students run and stand in groups of four. Which? Which is two. And they go and stand in groups of two. Monster? Monster, they go and stand in groups of five. All right, it's a listening and responding activity. Skeleton. Ah, by themselves, one. I'm good at this. Another great activity for Halloween, and really any theme you want to do, is Mad Libs. So here's what Mad Libs look like. They're a great way for kids to be funny and creative, but also to reinforce like descriptive writing and names of words like noun, adjective, verb, preposition, pronoun. Um, which aren't usually fun to review. Now, there are a couple links for Mad Libs below, but honestly, I started looking for some and they're all over the internet. I hope you enjoyed and remember to follow the SkyTeach blog. We have three new hot posts about Halloween and the link is also down below. The new video by Nastya for Handy Hacks is coming soon. This time she tells us about foreign grants for teachers. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our new community section. Bye for now. See you around. Have a spooky Halloween.